And now I want to take a couple minutes to just give you a general recap on conic sections and basically the various equations that you've learned and key things that you can take from each equation. Okay, so what I have is written a variety of different equations um, and in general I just have them written in the way that you should hopefully see them or at least recognize them. Sometimes you're going to have to manipulate them like this first equation here. This is standard form for a vertical parabola. Okay? You also sometimes see it in vertex form, but hopefully you'll be able to switch back and forth between those two fairly easily. So this first one, what our graph is, is a vertical parabola, like I just mentioned. And basically what that means is it's going to be going up or down. Okay? It could be going facing upwards, it could be facing downwards. It depends on that coefficient. And key IDing points are basically we have a y, single y, and a x squared. Okay, so those are the things you should look for in order to have a vertical parabola. Next thing I want to talk about is the x is equal to y squared parabola. Okay. Very similar, but instead of going up and down, this parabola is just going to go side to side. And it could either be opening right or opening left, again, depending on that coefficient. IDing points for this, single x, y squared. Next conic is going to be a circle. And this circle that I have here is actually moved over. We, so we have our center being shifted. But we know what an equation for a circle looks like. And that is just going to be something like this. And the key identifying pieces for this are we have a x squared, we have a y squared, and they both have the same coefficients. Okay? Sometimes you'll see this equal to r squared. Also, sometimes if you divide by r squared, what would end up happening is we'd have these fractions that look sort of elliptical, but if our x and radius, x radius and y radius are the same, that's really just going to be a circle. So what we idea is that is we have x squared, y squared, and these same coefficients. Okay, some other conics that we have talked about. The next one is an equation for ellipse. Again, the center for this ellipse is moved, but what we know that graph looks like is going to basically be a oval. Okay. Given this particular example, we don't know if it's going to be longer or taller. That all depends on whether the A or B is bigger. But we know that's an ellipse, and how we can tell that is we have a x squared plus y squared, and different coefficients. Okay, So next bit is almost identical in terms of the equation, but instead of dealing with a plus, we're dealing with a minus. Okay, The minus should be a key that we are dealing with a hyperbola. The x term is telling you, in this case, that it's going to be going side to side. So in this one we have something that looks like this. Key identifying features in this case are x squared minus y squared. The last little one we have is basically a hyperbola again. We are dealing with a x squared and a y squared. This time the y squared comes first. This tells me that we have a vertical hyperbola. Key identifying features are y squared minus x squared. Okay, so a lot of different information up here, but hopefully that has sort of helped you weed out identifying which is which. Last little key points I want to talk about are some other relationships we have with specifically ellipses and hyperboles, and that is to find the focus. Okay, so to find the focus on a ellipse, we can write that in right in here. We end up with a squared minus b squared is equal to c squared. For a hyperbola, the relationship with a squared and b squared are just addition instead of subtraction. Okay, And the way that I remember these differences is basically we know we have a positive to make to identify a ellipse, then we have a minus with our relationship with our focus. 
we have a minus in our equation for our hyperbola, we then have a plus for our relationship with our focus. So basically, the signs are opposite. You're either going to have one positive or one negative in each relationship. So just a brief overview of all the different types of conics we've looked at.